Hi everyone, my name is Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. <sighs> Coming back at you with another Friday Reads. <laughs> it seems to be the only thing I can stick with and I apologize. I just, yeah. Can't seem to do a ton more on a regular basis, so I'm sorry. Um, but for any of you who are new, welcome. Everyone who's been here for a while, thanks for watching and sticking around. Um, let's hop right into the song of the week this week. It has not been a good week for me. <laughs> um, she says, laughing. Um, it's not been a good week. And I, I've had other songs pop in my head throughout the week, but all day today I have had I Drink Wine by Adele stuck in my head. So that is the song of the week this week. I love her new album. It's really great. The only thing I don't like, and it's most apparent on this song, which is a bit of a bummer, is that the background singers sound like they are singing in baby talk. And it drives me bonkers. I knew that sounded weird somehow. Like the whole album sounds a little off. All the background singers sound off. They're doing a nice job. But it's like... I just... It sounds like baby talk. Someone is singing a baby talk. It makes me crazy. So I just try to sort of block that out if I can. And like wince a little bit. <laughs> and just keep moving on. So there you go. I Drink Wine by Adele. And because of my not too great week, I have read a little bit more. So last Friday reads, um, I think I mentioned that I fell and that I was feeling okay. And I was at that point. I fell on Wednesday. Um, all day Tuesday, we had snow off and on that melted into ice. It's that super, super slippery ice. It's like black ice, but slipperier, if that makes sense. Um, so... I had salted as much as I could salt. Wednesday morning I went to leave for work and I have like three or four steps to get in and out of my house. So I was taking them like one step at a time, you know, going carefully. And um, of course I had like six bags of things with me because I never leave the house without six bags of things. And I shifted my foot to the bottom, like the very last step so I was on the ground and I didn't move. And I just started to shift my weight over a little bit more and I went down like hands and knees down and my left big toe was on the deck on the deck on the step above me and I had torqued my foot um so I was fine on Wednesday I went to work I was okay I went I went to work on Thursday felt all right a little sore but you know I just fell on my hands and knees so of course then Friday I started to feel very not good and during my client in the afternoon it was really bad. I could hardly move and um, getting nauseated from the pain and overnight I threw up from the pain and it was really bad. I went to urgent care Saturday morning. I uh, got x-rays. They said nothing was broken but it feels like something is broken. Um, they just gave me a bunch of Advil. Not gave me. They told me to take a bunch of Advil and aspirin and to stay off of it. And I was trying to talk to my doctor to figure out what like how long he meant to stay off of it. You know, he's like, oh, I can't tell you that. I'm like, but you're my doctor, so shouldn't you? <laughs> like, I know you're not my regular doctor, but don't you have a clue, dude? Like, no, he wouldn't say anything. Um, so I canceled all of my clients this week because I have to do all the laundry at, for work before I go into work, before I can take clients. So that involves at least one day or not a day and a half of laundry, and that's up and down stairs multiple times. That's tons of tons of laundry so I canceled my clients and I'm glad that I did because I have been feeling terribly um the pain is getting a little bit better the swelling is down a little bit more I can put my foot into a crock I couldn't do that before it's just it's not been a great time so um while I'm trying to eat more regularly so I can take the Advil without giving myself a stomach problem um I have been reading a little bit off and on, and I have managed to finish three books. So, sorry for the blab, but I actually did get to read. It would have been more, but I was sleeping, and then also watching TV. Anyways, let's start with the first one I finished. That is Snow Falling on Cedars by David Gooderson. There's a, here we go. Uh, this was for Double Booked Co.'s February book club title pick. And I liked this, it was enjoyable. So it's historical fiction, ish with a, a slight time jump so it opens up in the 1950s in a courtroom where a Japanese man is on trial for the supposed murder of a white man in town 
So the, it's set on San Pedro Island off the coast of Washington State, Vancouver. It's over there. And Japanese people have lived there for several, several generations. Sorry. And alongside a lot of Nordic, Nordic, Norwegian, Danish people and German people, um, farmers, no one has any money really, you know. And in the 1950s, when this man is accused, it's because um, there's no proof, essentially, is what it is. So you flash back between that current time and then like the 1930s up to the 40s through the war. So the, the past time keeps catching up with you to the courtroom, to like present day. So you get flashbacks between the main man who was on trial, the Japanese man who was on trial, uh, his wife, uh, the newspaper man in town who grew up with the wife of the accused, and then also the deceased person. You get a lot of other people coming in too. The first half is like tons and tons of people and generations of people, and like none of it matters. So really, like you think and you assume that this Japanese man is did not commit the crime because there is no evidence for it, and that's not in his nature. It's not the kind of person that he is, all this stuff. But there's so much prejudice and there's so much racial injustice and it's, it's a little bit maddening. So I, I liked it. I liked the story. I thought it was interesting, um, but a lot of the racist and prejudicial stuff made me so incredibly angry. It was really difficult to read. Um, I don't know if I'll ever reread this again. I can't think that I ever will. I have not watched the movie yet, um, but I will be doing that. I got my copy from the library. So I'm wondering what that is like if they're gonna focus on the love story like the memory of the trailer is in my brain from the movie, which we know my memory is not the greatest. <laughs> um, so we'll see what this is like, but I am not going to hang on to this. I'm going to put this right in the recycling bin. I couldn't find my mom's copy that she read, so I just got this one cheap, and it's so beat up. Like, look at this. It's so beat up, and it's through the whole book, and no. And it's just a couple years old there's a little autograph thing in the front from Christmas from like three years ago. So Reddit, three stars. It was fine, but happy to be letting it go. Then next, I finished mostly by ebook, but I did finish it in this physical copy. This is When Beauty Tamed the Beast by Eloisa James, the second in her fairy tale series. So of course, follows Beauty and the Beast storyline. We have a young lady, um, well, not so young, Lynette. She's, you know, like 25, so she's old, of course, then. Um, and she's flirting with uh, the crown prince. And because of the cut of a dress that she wears, people assume that she is pregnant. And she keeps trying to correct, like, her father, her mother's past. She keeps trying to correct her father and her pushy aunt to be like, uh, we, you can't get pregnant from kissing, you know. Um, but no one's going to believe it. It's out in the town. Her reputation is ruined. And she hears circuitously about this man in Wales who has a castle, He, um, but he can't have children. So, but they need someone to pass this title along to. He's supposed to have a really bad temper. They call him the Beast. I mean, it's not subtle. Um, so her dad decides to send her there without a chaperone, with just her maid um, and her clothes. And they meet and they're attracted to each other, Lynette and this man whose name is, I forget what, Piers, that's right, Piers. Um, he's a doctor, he's a very brilliant doctor, but he's got, he walks with a cane, he's got a leg injury. And the assumption out there is that he can't have kids because of this leg injury, because of what happened. Um, so you get to know Piers, you get to see that he is, his bark is worse than his bite, of course. She's supposed to be so beautiful and so lovely, and he knows right away that she's not pregnant. Um, but they kind of joke back and forth about, well, they're going to get married. No, they're not going to get married. I don't like you. I'm not going to marry you. No, I don't like you either, you know. But they fall in love with each other. And um, then Scarlet Fever breaks out in the town. And people still didn't know what to do for it yet. They were still using leeches most places. But because he has this castle and he's a doctor, all of his friends are doctors, they are figuring out how to treat it. So he sends, Piers sends everyone in the castle away, his parents, Lynette, to try and save them. But uh, Lynette gets sick, and because she doesn't 
have any chaperones with her and she is in this carriage she just gets sort of tossed aside at a roadside inn and so can he find her in time once he realizes she's sick it's been like two weeks normally people that kill people all that time um trying to figure out where she is you know if she's still alive or not can they, she be treated are they gonna get together you know so it was interesting, especially for the doctoring parts um, about how they used to treat things. I'm assuming a lot of this is based on fact. I think Eloisa James does a pretty good job about keeping historical facts in check. And if she doesn't, she does mention it either before or after the book is finished. Um, so I, I enjoyed it. I'm not going to keep this one either. This series is fine so far, but I'm not loving it. So happy to be passing that one along. Also three stars. And then the reread. This is for the Out of the Coffin read along hosted by Ange at Ange's Book Chatter and Amy at Booktube with Amy. This is book number two in the Suki Stackhouse series and I really enjoyed the heck out of this. So in this one, Suki and Bill, um, or Suki gets called in to do a job for the vampires at Fangtasia and she gets put out on loan to vampires in New Orleans. Sorry, Dallas. Laura, it's called Living Down in Dallas. Wow. <sighs> On loan to vampires in Dallas for her unique mind reading gifts to see if they can find out where one of their nest members has gone, where one of the vampires has gone. So she and Bill travel down there and Eric is there in disguise as not himself. Um, people try to take Suki, they try to take Bill. Um, she gets to know the members of the Fellowship of the Sun Church and that is terrifying and horrifying. I, it made me so anxious reading all those parts. Um, she finds out about more aware people, so it's not just like werewolves, what she finds out about for sure, but it's also other were animals. And then of course, vampires she knows about too, but this was so much fun. This was so interesting. I'd forgotten almost everything in this book, um, but really, really enjoyed it. So this is getting a four star just because it's a heck of a lot of fun, quite honestly, so. Yeah, and looking forward to the live discussion, which will be Friday, if I get this up on time, that will be the same day <laughs> at 2 p.m. my time. Um, Amy and Ange are going to have a discussion about this book, so there's that. So I finished three. That feels better. I'm going to take a sip of the tea that I made that I forgot to drink before now, excuse me. Dang, that's good. And yeah. I hope to keep reading. I'm working on taxes right now. Fun, fun, fun. And um, I'm probably going to take another involuntary nap. I take like an involuntary two hour nap just about every day. And I say involuntary because it's like, I think, oh, I'm getting kind of tired. And then it's two hours later. <laughs> I'm like, what happened? Um, that's happening almost every day, like I said. And it doesn't even matter what time it is. Sometimes it's in the morning, sometimes it's the afternoon, or like eight o'clock at night. All of a sudden, I'm asleep. Let's blame that on my body trying to heal, shall we? Rather than my old age. So, anyways, enjoy the Adele song. I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope to be back here on a regular basis sometime soon. I truly do miss all of you. I just, this year has not been kind. So, I'm working on it. But, take care of yourselves. Read something wonderful, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.